Hey guys, and welcome to another Iron Man episode. I am actually going to start this one off by doing some Araxor, and then after that I'm going to do some Telos. I'm actually going to run quickly up to my bank and show you guys some stuff, but the reason why I want to do some Araxor is because it is now Spider Minions blocked, and I can do the Darkness Path, which is the super easy one with magic. And I actually spent some days, or I spent like one day, pretty much getting 37 more overloads, 38, 39 with these ones. I got some restores and Sarada members. So I have some supplies for bossing now as well as 1,100 roughly sailfish. So we should be good for a while. And I want to get the Noxious Scythe because I'm actually doing Telos with melee now mostly because I have the Master War gear. And I'm using a Dragon Rider Lance. So if I could actually upgrade this to a Noxious Scythe, that would help quite a lot at Tello, so that's why I want to try my luck at getting that fang with magic on Araxor. Did you imagine if this would be the fang, the first kill? Uh, unfortunate, could have been. Hey, Sirenic Scales, that's not too bad, I think I have 40 now. I think an Onyx would be nice now, can we have some? Oh, okay, we get Onyxes, but not the correct ones. Now, in case you're wondering, I have one Noxious weapon, and I have a spider leg already, so all I need is the fang, and I have my second weapon, and I'm at 345 KC now. And we get a Triskelion key fragment. I seriously have like 3,000 Lanternimes in the bank, so I'm actually just going to pet chance this one. Of course, very low chance. Do I have to roll a zero? Okay, so I... Yeah, that was not close. So I just looked up the rotation when it's going to change to the other paths, and it is apparently in five minutes. Yeah, it's pretty late, and... Uh, Five minutes is all I have left, so this is actually going to be the last kill. Kind of unfortunate timing, but um, would be nice to get the fang on this kill. No, but overloads is not bad at all. I've never done a Telos kill at this enrage before, so I'm risking this loot, but it's only 2.4 million, and it's mostly like dragon heights and stuff that I don't really need anyway, so... The loot is not really what I care about too much. If I would die, it would just be boring or sad to lose the 9 kill streak that increases your chance of getting the rares. But let's see if I can do this. Oh my god. Uh, probably couldn't have been much closer than that. Um, yeah, I don't know. Let's see what the reward we get regardless. At least I didn't lose my loot. We get some herbs and it was a lot of herbs. That was like one and a half million worth of uh, herbs. Let's see what the next enrage is going to be. 10% more, so not that much worse. Now, as I proxy my sign of death on Telos, I actually don't want to go in there before it's back, so I'm going to do some ED3, kill the first boss, maybe try the second one as well, and I can't kill the ambassador yet, but I have brought my lucky charms and tried to get some onyx dust, should be worth it. Very easy boss, and we get 600k in drop, mostly alkyboss it seems, 15 and the only thing that was doubled was just the reef relic, so that is kind of unfortunate. How many was it? Oh, two. Nice. I forget so many times to uh, actually just untoggle my chest to auto pick up loot, so uh, I actually forgot on this one as well. But um, let's see what we get, and uh, I guess I have to go to the chest to even see what I got. Regardless, I have my sign of death now, so we're going to have a look at what I've got in total. I'm going to stop here and see what we got from the boss. We got 1.8 million total, and I'm going to assume that I got the uh, huge blunt rune salvages again, because I don't think you can get this from anything other than the bosses. So, 2 million from this, not too bad. 11 onyx dust from the uh, reef relics, or the lucky charms. So that is uh, decent, I guess. That was probably the most close Telos kill I've ever had. Uh, I have one sailfish left and my sign procced because I got two of the one shots. I uh, immortality the first one and then the second one my sign of death saved me. So uh, I definitely need that sign of death to be able to do this. If I had a tier 90 weapon then maybe it would be a bit easier. But uh, I'm using also the Majorat Aura instead of a Accuracy one. And the last phase on higher accuracy with melee is pretty hard for me. So uh, let's see what we get. We get... Ooh, that was close. Some more er um, hides. Now we're at 4.3 million. And uh, yeah, it's just more hides. I'm thinking I don't really care that much for risking this. I guess the Toad Flags is the uh, scary part. But uh, I'm definitely going to just continue the challenge. Hopefully not 20%. Ooh, 15%. Well, we're up at like, what, 140% now or something like that? Now, basically on the last phase, I have to have a sign of death to be able to do the uh, DBS check right now because I always get two one-shots and I use the immortality on the first one and the sign of death on the second one. So it is very, very risky. And as you can see, my food is, uh, well, I only have three Sardar members left. 
but uh, still haven't died luckily and we get some salvages this could be a lot of alex actually how much is it 111 of them and that was like one and a half million alex i guess i'm not sure how much these are actually alked for but i guess that much let's see what the next enrage is going to be it is going to be 11 percent so we're almost at 150 now and if I do manage to get this kill, this is where I'm going to stop because as you can see it is very very close But I have to wait an hour before trying it out for this kill I'm going to try the berserker aura so I'm going to be taking a bit more damage But uh, hopefully I can actually reach the dps checks that is required and I failed a hold still and I lost everything there. Uh, my follower is actually... This is new, I think. Is this usually how it is? Where your uh, follower drops all your food right here? I feel like you lost it before or right away. But uh, I was kind of confused because I got hit by the hold still invader. And I kind of like... I thought I had anticipation up, but I didn't. And I got stunned. And then I died. And I was like, well, I have my sign of death. But it, as you can see, had like 40 seconds left on the cooldown. So that is pretty unfortunate, lost uh, pretty much all my loot, but uh, as you can see it was only like 5 mil, most of it was in hides. So I'm just going to go back there, do like a 100% enrage kill and uh, finish my task now. And I didn't pick up my gear. Actually didn't lose everything, uh, I still have a lot of loot here actually. 3.5 mil, that is not that bad then, I only lost like 2 million. Almost managed on 100% uh, to kill it without it even doing the one shot. But um, yeah, just barely, 6,000 off, so maybe I'm getting the stuns a bit down more now than uh, I did before. Before I was just kind of stunning randomly, and uh, now I feel like I might be uh, doing it a bit more efficiently. But uh, 10 minutes, 10 and a half minutes for that kill, let's see what we get. And uh, I can definitely feel like the Berserker Aura is doing a lot more damage, but uh, I am also taking a lot more, so uh, <laughs> it is a trade off, of, of course, but uh, some nice Lanta Dimes, I'll just keep them in there for now. Uh, I just did a 9 minute magic kill on 117% and rage, and I was thinking, I haven't tried magic since I actually got Dreadnips, and after I got Dreadnips, I also tried melee at the same time, and maybe the coincidence was just that Dreadnips was the difference, and not the actually going melee gear that was the difference. I'm pretty sure that's the case. This is like way easier. I have more stuns, I have more AoE, I feel like. Maybe not more AoE, but I have enough AoE anyways, and I feel like my... Like, I have this stun, I have this stun, and I have this stun, and I have Dreadnips. I have like four stuns. So, uh, magic is definitely not bad. And the reason why I'm still doing Telos is because, as you can see, I have a new Reaper assignment of Telos. And we get Stone Spirits, and 19. Nice. Awesome loot. Let's see what the enrage is going to be. 10%, that's good. I am definitely going to try a new magic kill after that. Super good attempt. I actually died in the last phase on like 5000 HP left of the boss, so that kind of demotivated me to keep going right now. I just want to finish the Reaper assignment, so I'm just going to do like 0% enrage kills with a Reaper Demon to get it done super quick. 0% enrage loot be like... 108 Red Dragonites. Done with that, and pretty much halfway on Reaper points, or more than halfway to an Amulet of Souls replacement for this one, when I have to use this to make the Essence of Finality, which is definitely going to help me a lot on Telos, but uh, close to the Serum Bow, uh, we get some Light and Amica Stone Spirits. Absolutely atrocious. Back to ED2, and I'm going to farm some Onyx Dust, hopefully I will be decently lucky, because pretty much all my Hydrix Jewelry is very low, and I only have one Onyx in the bank, and I'm bringing, of course, Lucky Charms for even more chance of getting some Onyx Dust, but let's see what we get from the first boss. I forgot my Reaper Demon, but uh, still fine, I guess. Uh, what did we get? We got some Onyx Dust. How much did we get? It is... 14. I think that's on, like, the middle, so not terrible, I guess. I swear I can never ever remember to turn off the auto collect loot. So this can't be doubled, but uh, hopefully we get some nice loot anyways <laughs> when Veraglith dies. There we go, a 752, which was a personal best, which is very nice. But I do have to go to the <laughs> loot chest to see what I got. Wait, is this what I got? A redacted Dragonkin research? I don't really see anything else here that could be the drop. I have to google what this even is. It's actually lore, uh, so I guess this is for an achievement, and that's pretty much that. Uh, I'm not sure if that was actually, like, the only drop that I got, but it is one of the drops that I got, so I guess if I just read it, I'm going to get an achievement, or it is a part of an achievement. 
Maybe you need to get one of these for each boss or something. Will something happen now? No. Well, nice, I guess. <laughs> if some of you guys are playing Iron Man and you're struggling to get precious components, which is something I struggled with quite a lot recently, if you do ED2 and you get these perfect gemstone scales, which you get pretty frequently in the last part when you kill all the Hydrix and Dragonstone dragons, if you just disassemble them, look at this, I get four precious components and four precious components. So I got almost two equipment siphons from just those two dragon scales. It's super nice. Have a decent amount of food left and 30 draconic energy. Not sure how much that is, but that is a just below 11 minute kill. Uh, 30 draconic. I feel like that was doubled. Maybe it wasn't. No, I don't think it was actually. 30 seems like quite a lot actually. That's like a 4 mil drop on a main account and it is... How much is it to actually make the elite items? 140 for one of them. And then of course these two as well. But uh, yeah, seems decent I guess, but would rather have Onyx Dust right now. I'm actually not quite sure why, but I took so much damage that kill. I almost ran out of food, but uh, yeah, I didn't manage to get the kill for 21 Onyx Dust, which is on the higher end. Dude, what am I looking at? There's two mini bosses literally beside each other, both up at the same time. You know what that is? That's uh, 10,000 Dungeoneering tokens for free. This time I did remember to actually disable the loot thing, so uh, let's, let's see what we get this time. We get some Onyx Dust, and how many did we get? It doesn't show up here. 14. Decent, I guess. Let's see. And we get Draconic Energy this time as well, but 7 this time. Quite a difference from 30 on the last kill. But uh, it is something, I guess. I guess the last boss doesn't really drop uh, that often, the uh, Onyx Dust. I've seen it on the drop table, but I'm not sure if it's just a bug or something, because I've always got Draconic Energy. Maybe it's just a coincidence, who knows. From Lucky Charms, I got 22 Onyx Dust, and this is the overall loot that I got. 2 mil, nothing too great to be honest. I think I'm almost at 100 Onyx Dust now, so I should be able to make an Onyx. I can actually go to the bank and just check how close I am to 100 real quick in the same clip. Let's uh, go over here, and I have 105, so I can actually make another Onyx, so pretty nice. So this is ED1, and I think that the bosses here are fairly hard. I think all of them is pretty hard compared to other bosses where, for example, in ED3, the first two bosses are pretty easy, and in ED2, pretty much all of them are pretty easy. But in this one, I think that they are all fairly decently hard. None of them, of course, as hard as the Ambassador, but uh, we will see if I will manage to kill all of them. But uh, let's start off with killing the trash. Lucky Charm proc for a Sirenic Scale. That is uh, first time I've got that, but that is not that bad. Now we're at the Sanctum Guardian, which is the first boss in the ED1 dungeon. And it has 450,000 HP, and it is pretty much a DPS race. The mechanics are not that hard, it has like a um, blast beam, a water beam, that it starts from this area right here where my mouse is. And then it goes all around to the same place, you can actually save spot the initial hit by standing around this area. And then after that it will give you like a beam on, or a bar under your HP, that uh, when it goes to Siri you have to place a fire pool somewhere in the room, so if you have bad DPS, the entire room is going to fill and you will die. Uh, that's pretty much all the mechanics. He also does like a water splash where you have to protect from melee, otherwise you have to protect from ranged most of the time. And that's the entire fight, but uh, it is quite a DPS race, 450,000 HP is quite a lot. And you can get one shot by the water beam if you screw it up very easily. So let's see if the next clip is me dying or getting a kill. Okay, um, I died there on 75,000 HP left, and I think I have to just get better at placing the fires because I got overwhelmed by the fire, that is the only reason I died, and I don't have enough money for that, so I have to do some alking. Okay, um, probably the closest it could have been, 4 minute kill, and uh, how many Onyx Dust is that? It is 10. So uh, yeah, quite a DPS check I have to say, if I uh, maybe had my pages in my Armadale book, or uh, just had a bit more DPS, maybe scrolls in my Reaper Demon or something, that would have been a bit easier. But uh, yeah, I, uh, this is something I, I definitely can improve on, of course, placing the fires and all that. But uh, yeah, even if I felt like that was decent, it was very close. 
Masuta the Ascended is the second boss in ED1 and it is known to be the hardest one. The last one is actually not the hardest one apparently. This one has 550,000 HP and it has a lot of things that can one shot you pretty much. It spins around like a blade storm thing and it hits you really hard with melee and it's pretty hard to get away from. You can surge away from it but uh, it is pretty fast so you can't just run away from it. Also it has like a one shot where it jumps into the air and lands on you and can hit like 10k with ma magic. But of course 5k, 6k's if you pray magic. Also that can be reduced if you go to some water pools that spawn, you kill them and you stand close to them, then you get a 5% damage reduction to that ability later on. And uh, there's quite a lot of one shots actually in this fight, so I'm going to be using a sign of death. And I'm actually not going to use the Maniacal Aura, I think I'm probably going to take way too much damage. So I might be going with like a Supreme Runic Accuracy one, going to activate that right now, I don't care that's 15 minutes left. So yeah, let's see if I can actually do this or if the first attempt is going to be a death. Most likely it will be a death. So uh, when I watched the guide for this, it seemed pretty difficult, but in reality it is pretty easy actually. Uh, I am taking some damage now though, but uh, I got 65% damage reduction from the thrashing waters. If you watch a guide you can see what it is, it basically spawns like pools all over the room. You go to them, you kill them, you get 5% damage reduction from the magic attacks in the last phase. And I got 65%, so that is pretty high. And that might be why it was so easy in the end, but 16 onyx dusts and we got uh, 4 extra onyx dusts from the lucky charm. Very nice, and that was supposed to be the hardest boss. But uh, every time I actually have heard that from guides, they say that like, for example, in ED2, they said Veraclith is the hardest boss. I think Blackstone uh, Dragon or Black, whatever it's called, the last one, is definitely harder than Veraclith. So maybe it was a bait, maybe the last boss in this raid will actually be the hardest one. So here is the last boss, Seiryu the Azur Serpent, and uh, it is as a solo a super long fight. I think I saw Dovidas slash a friend, the YouTuber, take like 22 minutes to kill this. And it has 7.5 million HP, but you don't actually kill that much HP. The boss is uh, very long because you have to go on its uh, back here or this chain here. And then you have to kill crystals and they have quite a lot of HP. When they all die, the boss dies or gets uh, saved basically, he's actually a good guy. You jump down also, there's going to be like some blobs that spawn here and they go towards the boss and they heal the crystals. So you only have a limited time to DPS the crystals, you have to jump down, kill these blobs. And other than that, you just have to wait until you can go up on the back again, kill the crystals and that's pretty much it. There's also some mechanics that do damage to you. So for example, there's going to be some black circles that spawn, that spawn uh, two different things, either, ten either tentacles on the ground that you have to move out of, or there's hands that are on the ED2 dragon boss, the last one. There's like hands that spawn and they go towards you and you have to move. If you stand in them, you die very fast. But it's pretty much just avoid things and resonance a big breath that the boss does and you should be fine. It should just be a very long fight. So let's see what happens. So these are the hands, I want to show that, so uh, these hands you have to move away from, so if you go into them you're going to take a lot of damage. And here is the resonance thing, but I guess I'll just reflect it because I don't actually have one. Uh, but yeah, if you have resonance there, you should definitely resonance the big breath. And this is the time where you can actually jump up here, and now I get to DPS these black crystals. And they have 150,000 HP, so they have quite a lot of HP. And you can see here that this is starting to like channel the blobs. I don't know how long time I actually have to DPS this. Uh, so we will have to see how long I have. And after a while, there's going to be blobs that spawn here that I do have to go and kill. Uh, otherwise, it is just going to heal the boss or the crystals to full. So I guess they're going to... Maybe they... Oh, okay, they're spawning now. So... I guess I should maybe go down now, but how do I actually go down? There's no like button? Uh, where do I click? Oh, there. Yeah, okay, now I'm too late because now they're going to go in and they're going to heal the crystal. Can I actually maybe get some of them? Okay, so I just have to be way faster there. And I just have to aggro them so they don't go into the boss. And let's see if they heal the crystal. Yeah, they got healed for a lot. So I just have to be faster and I should be fine. Yeah, it's full again. I'm not joking, in the middle of a fight I got an error that the whole game just crashed. And I just killed one of the crystals, let's see what actually happens when I log in. And I'm outside the raid, perfect. 
Look at that kill time, 37 minutes. This is the last crystal and I did actually screw up once and a crystal healed from 400 HP to full. That was kind of unlucky, uh, not going to lie, that's why it took so long. But um, yeah, it's definitely not a hard boss. It's just a very tedious boss that takes a very long time. I think if it didn't heal, I could have probably done this in probably like... Ooh, I would have to say like 27 minutes maybe or something like that, which is still not a very fast kill It's a slow kill, but these crystals are weak to melee. They're not weak to magic So I am considering maybe going melee for this boss in the future, but 10 ancient scales scales is pretty decent I think they're 900,000 each so that was a 9 million drop if you don't know what they're used for They're actually used for this they're made to or you use them to you can see here 140 these are like the draconic energies. You make the elite sirenic gear with this. And I think this is from like Pernix items. So you just have to get Pernix items, a lot of ancient scales, and then you can, uh, with an Al Algarum thread, uh, you can uh, make a sirenic mask into an elite one. So I would have to farm a lot of uh, ED1 if I want to get the full elite sirenic. As you can see, 420, 280. And how much is the helmet? 140. So close to like 700 uh, scales. Quite a lot. And uh, this is everything that I got from the chest. I actually got like 1.5 million. But I picked some items out to allocate them. Because as you can see I have like no money. And when I died I needed that money to reclaim my items. I also had to run back a few times and pick it up from the grave. But anyways 5 onyx dust. Pretty decent I guess. And uh, overall, I'm happy about the run. I definitely think the last boss is the hardest one, but uh, not because it's very scary or that you die easily on it. It's just because it is such a tedious boss. And the second boss is more scary in the way that you can die, but still not very scary. I think the first boss is probably the most hectic one. Second one is a bit chill in my opinion. And the third one is just very, very, very long and tedious. But I think with that I'm going to end the video. I am very happy with the progress I've made in ED dungeons in general. Like I've cleared ED1, ED2 and ED3 up to the ambassador. So basically the only elite dungeon boss I haven't managed to solo is the ambassador. Which is fair enough. It's a very hard boss to solo. Probably the hardest one in the game. And I've heard it's actually harder to solo than Raksha. And Raksha is a very hard boss to solo. From what, I, what I've heard at least. To learn it it's very hard. So I might try to learn that in the kind of near future, but uh, I will have to take a look at how that boss works and all that. But I uh, hope you guys did enjoy the video, I sure did enjoy making it. And uh, if you do, please leave a like, subscribe if you want to see more of my content. Also you can click any of the videos on the screen right now if you want to see a video right away. The last one actually didn't get that many views that I posted and it was very, I think it was a very good video. It was uh, me basically trying my first ambassador kills. So if you want to see that, you can click on the video that is on the screen right now. Have a good one guys, take care.